Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Women Who Rock with Success, a digital media source for professional and entrepreneurial women. Did you know that we can be found on Google Play, Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, Sam's Broadcasting, Autocast, and more? Women Who Rock with Success airs live each Tuesday at 9 a.m. Central Time. Followed by our latest brand, Women Who Rock Investigate. We handpick professional women in many areas who can provide credible information in their field to build your business and lifestyle. To learn more about us, just visit our website at www.womenwhorockwithsuccess.com. Good morning and welcome to the broadcast on today. And so this is your host, Ms. Diane Winbush, creator and founder of Women Who Rock With Success. And so we want to get right into our topic. Um, as we know, um, the COVID-19 has developed many changes for Americans and our global neighbors. And so our goal is to help corporate America women through this period in their lives with business tools and strategies uh, to mobilize um, their career. So today we will be discussing and providing expertise tools in diverse areas of staffing. And one um, is in cast staffing for actors. The other one is in HR, and that's also in regards to polishing up um, your resume, making sure that you have uh, what it needs, Hello? what you need to be able to um, get where you need to be as far as um, employee staffing is concerned. And so, um, and next we will be discussing also in regards to marketing, uh, in regards to blogging. And so for that reason, we have three guests that are on our panel today. And so our first guest is COO of Casting of the Hop Network, and she is also um, a casting director. And so that is Julia Bianco. And our next panel um, that we have on the show today is um, CEO and founder of HR Connection is Holly Noon. And our last guest on to Today is marketing blogging strategist Janice Wall. So good morning to all of the panel and welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Not for sure where the rest of the panel is at, but it looks like they're dropping their call is dropping and they are trying to get back in. But anyway, anyway, so um we have Holly Noon, correct? That's you today, um Holly? Yep. Yes, I'm here. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And so um, just tell us a little bit about you and tell us about your brand. Sure, absolutely. So I'm Mm -hmm. the owner of HR Connection, and I'm a certified human resource professional through the Society of Human Resource Management. And I have pretty much over a decade of experience when it comes to, like, employee retention, hiring, um, job searching, recruiting, training, and then my business mainly focuses on career coaching from, you know, resumes, interview prep, and just helping individuals create opportunities, you know, within their job search. Okay, great. And so what inspired you to be able to, uh, first of all, um, get involved with with human resources and what, uh, I guess, catapulted you to be able to – um, um, launch the HR connection. Sure. So I really became passionate about human resources probably when I got into a management development program and kind of working with being mentored by like executives on, okay, this is what mm-hmm. we're looking for in terms of employees. You know, you need to learn HR practices, but basically I had to learn about people collaborating you know, empowering them, educating them, you know, if I'm going to be, you know, a manager of, of others at some point. And um, mm-hmm. from there, I realized, like, I had a knack for seeing someone's weaknesses and then working with them to make them, you know, better. And so mm-hmm. I kind of translated that in, you know, um, the struggles that people have when they look for jobs. Like, hey, I, 
like they know they're a talented professional, but just writing resumes isn't their thing. So it's like, how do we, you know, sell them on a one page resume, you know, because sometimes it's really hard for people to try and condense everything into one page and selling themselves. But, you know, so that's my main goal is to help people realize um, you have all the talents, but let's put it together in a nice package so you can get the job. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, exactly. So um, according to um, Gary Bernison, which is who is a contributor of CNBC, his quote is, the busy, biggest mistake that he sees people making when job hunting is especially during the times of de- desperation is limiting their strategy to only sending out as many resumes as possible and not taking a few minutes out of their day to focus on networking. So collaborate with us a little bit about that on his quote and his stance in regards to resumes versus over to networking. Sure, absolutely. So, you know, I think, and I hear this all the time from clients or just even friends of mine who apply, they're like, hey, I've applied to 200 jobs. And I'm like, okay, Mm -hmm. you're more than likely not going to hear back for more than half of those. And so I always say, hey, have you tried reaching out? Have you tried doing your job search through like LinkedIn or you, and mm-hmm. using your network? And so what I say to them is like, at, on, at least on LinkedIn, if you see a job post, you, have, you know who the recruiter is or the hiring manager is. And so you can reach out directly mm-hmm. to them on that job post. And if you apply, so you're more likely to get feedback. And then also on the company you're interested in, you can find people who work a similar position you're interested in to get feedback like, hey, what skills or experience do you have that you got this position? You know, and just kind of network to see if maybe they might say, hey, you know, we actually do have an opening. I'll be willing to refer you. So it's just utilize. I, I'm a big fan of LinkedIn and just making sure that's up to date and l- networking with not only people just like what companies you're interested in, but maybe people you went to school with who might be able to um, get you in somewhere because I always network um, with people I went to school with and I'm like, hey, we both were in this program at the same time and that's always like a good way to introduce yourself. Hey, I see you went here or I see you worked here. So that's just a good way to utilize um, Mm -hmm. LinkedIn to kind of create more opportunities for yourself versus just applying and not really hearing back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So in regards to networking, let's kind of, uh, you, you know, because a lot of times we can go several ways. So how effective um, to you with your expertise is networking in regards to, okay, so take, for example, let's, let's I guess, kind of bring it home this way. I would always mention to individuals um, in the past that your business card is your appearance. It's, it, it, it creates um, mm-hmm. a, 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 um, it creates a display of who you are. Um, and so even how we got things structured, you know, even on our business card tells a lot about us as well. So when we go to networking events, I'm still trying to kind of stick to this quote <laughs> that the gentleman had gave on CNBC. So when we go to networking events, does how can how does that represent our resume? Because okay, so take for instance, a person can have things listed on their resume, but then when they mm-hmm. show up for an actual um, 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 engagement of network, it the, the uh, sometimes it may not be compatible. So if I come to Holly to HR Connection. Holly uh, 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 sees my description on the outside, but when she picks up my resume, it is something totally different. So how important Mm -hmm. is it for us to make sure that we have the right networking skills to be to, to be able to be compatible to our um, resume? And I'm going to touch on that a little bit in a, uh, in a little bit to um, explain why I'm kind of going, going that away with that. So, well, when we guess we can finally network in person <laughs> again. Um, okay. Yeah, I think it's important that, yes, your, everything aligns, right? I'm a big person and your brand needs to be consistent across, you know, like you said, like you give me a business card, but then I look at your resume and it doesn't match. So I think mm-hmm. one thing that people really need to be good about is 
having being self-aware of like how they're coming off do you know how to do it give an elevator pitch and I think some people need I always am a big fan of the one thing I do with clients is ask them to sell themselves to me in like 30 seconds and then I okay. compare it to their resume to say okay, okay this is what you're saying but this is not what's being presented and so then okay. we go through and fine tune so that when they are meeting people in person, whether at a networking event, interview, or, you know, they can kind of utilize that pitch over and over again. So it's consistent with what's on their resume, LinkedIn, in person, you know, to bring it all home in terms of just consistency and being self-aware of how you're coming off to others. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So with a lot of millions of individuals that are in the unemployment line, uh, they are receiving mm-hmm. unemployment during the COVID-19 uh, crisis and pandemic that we're kind of um, seeing where people are not working. How effective mm-hmm. still, still how effective. That doesn't mean just because they're, they're, the people are not working don't mean they don't have any jobs. It's two right. different you know, things and stuff, because sometimes mm-hmm. uh, more than likely people are going to be going back to work. So for the ones right. that have lost their jobs during the COVID-19, what would you suggest as to resume building and where would they uh, need to, where such as HR Connection, be able to apply to make sure that they have all the criteria that they need for a good presentation? Um, well, I'm a big fan of Pinterest. They have really good recommendations for what resume templates should look like, um, gives examples of uh, ways to introduce yourself, how to dress for business occasions and events. Um, and it, mm-hmm. I like that because it's always updating for the most current trends, which can mm-hmm. change very rapidly from time to time. So I would say if you know, you're not, you're currently unemployed and looking, definitely check online for those type of resources to make sure, you know, you're up to date with what the current trends are. So you're a more attractive employee. Also take advantage of free courses to maybe update your skills okay. on your resume. Mm-hmm. Um, since, you know, you have that time available. Also within your network, ask for feedback on your current resume to see if people, you know, can give you tips and recommendations you know, and how you can improve um, your resume. Not just, Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. well, yes, um, but I think sometimes getting stuck in a pair of eyes on your resume or cover letter will really give you insight on how to improve. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so as Facebook um, has so many um, opportunities Mm -hmm. for um, a user. They have opportunities for individuals to brand their business. They have opportunities for an individual to market their business. So for listeners mm-hmm. who are, are seeking employment, what strategies could you use or what type of tools on Facebook could they use in order to be able to search and land that perfect job for them? Oh, sure, absolutely. So, um, you know, you could... For Facebook, I think you can always just, it's a good place to just market yourself. And so, you know, you could create a post, say, hey, I'm looking for a job. So using hashtags is really important. Um, So that way your post can trend, making sure it's public so people can share it. Um, I've seen where people have posted their resume on Facebook. And people have, have made comments and they've gotten job connections that way. They're like, hey, hit me up here, you know, if you want to talk about a job opportunity. So I've seen that. Um, also, I would just say to be careful what you post on Facebook if you're looking for a job. Uh, you don't want people to find anything <laughs> unfavorable. And then mm-hmm. um, also companies that you're interested in working on, follow their Facebook um, and see if mm-hmm. they're posting anything about jobs. Because um, that mm-hmm. could be a good way to reach out and then someone can respond and directly connect since companies are trending more towards, you know, being more um, responsive Mm -hmm. on their social Mm -hmm. media. Okay. 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 And I think um, at this time we have uh, uh, our marketing, marketing blogging strategist, 
Janice Wall that is on the um, call at this time. So, Janice, welcome to the show, and good morning. And tell us a little bit about you and your brand. Hi, Diane and everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I'm truly delighted to be here. I am Janice Wald, and I blog over at MostlyBlogging.com. I'm also an ebook author. I've written an insider's guide to building a successful blog and all the Instagram tips and tricks you need to know. I've also written how to make money by blogging and varying your income string. And as Diane mentioned, I do study marketing, and I'm delighted here to be here today to um, offer any marketing tips I can share, especially in this COVID-19 economy. Mm-hmm. Great, great. So I'm delighted that uh, that you joined us, and we also have another guest on the panel, and that's HR Connection uh, founder and CEO Holly Noon. So she's on the panel with you also today. So. Hi. Hi. Okay. So taken from your from your blog post, uh, Janice, this question is towards you. And the title of yes. the blog post is entitled Seven Marketing Skills to Help You in a Job. So talk to us a little bit and explain to the audience about e marketing. Um, yes, I would be happy to and it's really very good news and there's not a lot of good news right now in this uh COVID-19 economy, and but yet for digital marketers, there's a lot of good news, and I'm, I'm happy to share. With your digital marketing skills, you are more than qualified to land a job in the post-COVID-19 economy, and I'll be happy to tell you why. Um, the, the current supply for marketers uh, does not meet the demand. And uh, I have a stat here, 69% of companies hire marketers. And I'm sure you know when the supply does not meet the demand, uh, the, mm-hmm. the people in the labor force can raise their uh, rates and, and really uh, charge competitive um, uh, prices for their, for their services. And that mm-hmm. this variety in the companies of all the digital marketing jobs that are currently available and will even be more available in the future um, – will not change and it's so easy to be a digital marketer i mean the courses are affordable uh if you get certified it boosts your income even more and uh Mm -hmm. the digital marketing skills uh enable you to reach potential customers uh you know through targeting uh you know how to reach them on mobile social media And the bottom line is you just have these skills that other people don't. And if you don't want to work for a company, you can start a consulting firm. You could start your own own business. Uh, You you know, the world is really your oyster uh, currently and going forward. Okay. Wow. That is awesome. That is awesome. So um, what is, what is e-marketing to, to, in regards to, okay, so take for instance, like you have, you're, you're a small business owner and you're a mompreneur and what have you, you have your own uh, market line and brand. So um, in regards to staffing, how would you, what advice could you be able to give to those that, that employ to you that, you, that, that are working with you or under you as employees, because even in the COVID-19, some people feel that they don't want to go back to the to the restaurant. They don't want to go back to the hamburger job. Some people that have had corporate America jobs, they're trying to flip between the fact of, look, where do I go from here? Is, is I'm going to get my job back or is I'm going to be laid off or how long is this pandemic going to last? So could you share just, just a few tips and tools with the employees that you have um, in regard regards to strategies that you give to them to be able to keep them uh, mobilized and moving during all of this that is going on? I would be happy to. Um, If you're a business owner, there are certain skills you're going to need in your employees uh, going forward, Um, and uh, I'll be happy to share a few of them. Um, Currently, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they did, I think it was Forbes that reported um, 80% of consumers got their in- information through videos. 
since we've been in uh, COVID-19 lockdown, and that number is only going to rise. It's predicted that by 2022, 82% of all people will be getting their information through videos. And uh, they Mm -hmm. like it. They're doing it now, and and they like it, and they want to continue going forward. So uh, the employer should make sure that their employees know how to make videos, and they're going to need those skills. And for people, like you said, that don't want to go back to the hamburger, you know, the hamburger stand and so forth, <laughs> yeah. uh, once, rest- <laughs> once restaurants reopen, um, they don't have to. I mean, I, I, would, I would highly recommend them uh, learning digital marketing, and that will enable them to be, um, you know, in demand. I think, you know, in life, you've got to go with the flow. And right now, the flow is toward mm-hmm. uh, online, because we've been online for two months, and it's working, and, mm-hmm. uh, and employers see that. You know, brick and mortar, the days are, are numbered um, as every, you know, as people see it, it, it is working online and they don't have to go on long commutes. So if people want um, better opportunities once uh, shelter in place lifts, they should definitely learn uh, digital marketing. And um, in addition, you know, the, the strategy uh, is in copywriting has changed the last two months. Because people are scared, understandably so, about COVID-19. And so marketers mm. right now are shifting. You know, it's, they're pivoting from um, a, you know, like marketing approach to a customer-centered approach. So instead of, hey, this is what we have for you, you know, this is what we want to sell you, it's, hey, how you doing? <laughs> How are you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, what can we do for you? And this shift um, toward empathy uh, is is working, and, and customers feel taken care of, and that the that the marketer, the brand, is that rock, the community leader. But not everybody uh-huh. knows how to write with empathy, and so uh, not just video making skills, but uh, copywriting. Uh, that will enable people to make the consumer feel cared about so that they'll want to purchase from the brand, I think is also important post-COVID-19. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, absolutely. So with that being said, um, um, Holly, uh, I, I noticed that, you know, with HR Connection, you have also moved to to uh, digital e-marketing as well with the, uh, with the uh, company, uh, you know, on Instagram. So, uh, for Instagram users in the audience, kind of describe to us a little bit how effective um, is that going to become in regards to the information that we just got from Janice? Oh, I I definitely find it to be um, very beneficial using Instagram for marketing. Um, you know, the importance of hashtags like I was saying earlier, so your post trend. But, I mean, I've been able to connect with other HR professionals as well as people who just wanted information on resumes and then, you know, other promotional opportunities, you know, to appear Mm -hmm. on other blogs to talk about employment opportunities in HR. So, yeah, I think Mm -hmm. going to a more digital platform is really important and really advantageous at this time since more people are at home. And, you know, in front mm-hmm. of a computer, on their phone, tablet. So, you know, right, a good time to capitalize on mm-hmm. being more visible. So do you, okay, absolutely. So do you see uh, where policies and, 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 and rules may change in the workplace, in the human resource industry, due to the COVID-19, because I know for, I was reading today on some articles where they, where the justice system is even, um, uh, you know, considering changing some options. Um, I think it was Nancy Pelosi. She's she's thinking about changing, you know, trying to put on the table about, you know, uh, the, the prison offenders and, you know, how they're uh, getting the, the COVID-19 and it's not uh, their fault. It's actually the you know, the um, the workers, the employees that are giving it to them. So they're thinking about considering it. So do you see any consideration or any any uh, uh, upcoming policies that you feel that may change or need to change in regards to staffing? Um, no, so absolutely. So there already have been changes. I mean, um, just being a part of the Society of Human Resource Management, I mean, I get daily communications about how mm-hmm. to manage, like, return to work or even – allowing your staff to just work 100% remote and, like, what, is those, what do those transitions look like? Um, because not everyone feels comfortable coming back to the office. 
And so then there adds that other layer of, okay, can, you can't really enforce your employees to come back. So, you know, you have to, human resources is a big part of, okay, how do you make employees feel comfortable? Do you say just let them work from home? So there's a lot of moving factors right now as things mm-hmm. are changing month to month. But yes, many companies, you've seen it. Um, Twitter says they're going to let their employees work from home forever. Uh, Amazon until October. Oh. You know, so many companies are already allowing their employees to kind of work remote until further notice if they can. Yeah. Um, and if they can't, there's been a lot of safety initiatives put in place for those workers that do need to come back to the office. So there's, those discussions are happening now um, mm-hmm. already. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, Okay. Okay, so even with that, do you see, uh, you know, even though we have lost a lot of Americans, we have lost a lot, mm-hmm. but do you see the COVID-19, and this is for both of you all, for you and Janice to respond to this, you first, Holly, and then we'll okay. let Janice respond. Do you see the COVID-19 in some instances as an advantage for those that may have small businesses at home, have, uh, you know, their own um, uh, brand that they market or what have you, because, uh, you know, some some conversations that I've been hearing, some people see this as an advantage. They don't see it as all bad, you know, for uh, business owners and entrepreneurs. No, I definitely see it as an, uh, definitely as a opportunity, um, as a positive. You know, I mean, think about mm-hmm. you have more time to work on things you didn't have before. Um, mm-hmm. And so people are working on their businesses that didn't, that were previously didn't have the time to do it. Um, mm-hmm. And then with everything kind of moving online, there's, and things are becoming free because they just, you know, they're just trying to be more customer focused. Um, you can mm-hmm. take advantage of resources like free courses, free certifications that you can only just, if you're a business owner, add to your repertoire. So mm-hmm. I think, yeah, I, I look at it as a positive. I mean, I've been able to put out more content and, you know, these three months than I have in a year, you know, just because I have more time <laughs> I <know. laughs> to think about it. You know what I mean? Like, that's just, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I'm like taking advantage of the more time to be able to focus on my business and other personal goals during this time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So Janice, you can respond. Yes, um, I would be happy to. Uh, I I think it's a benefit for everyone, um, small and large businesses alike. Uh, I was reading an article just yesterday where it said uh, before COVID-19, a business, small or large, you know, might send an employee uh, on an airplane across the world and they have to pay for the flight and then they have to pay for the person to stay in a hotel for three days and maybe for meals and to get back. And now that they realize that their employees can video conference, they're going to be saving all that money on what they used to spend just to get the person across the world to take a meeting. Uh, and, um, and, you know, a lot of people, as Holly was saying, in the time that they're saving not on that commute any longer, uh, you know, think about, you know, all the people that would burn out and retire young for that reason, and now they're not going to burn out because they're not as tired just saving time on that commute. And as Holly said, people are using that extra time to get certified, you know, online, and that's making them more marketable in the economy and, and certainly the economy to come. And even if it's just spending more quality time with their children, um, you know, mm-hmm. they don't have to retire young or, you know, worry about burnout, trying to do too much, to do too, too little, um, simply by saving time on the commute. I, I think it's good for her. I mean, I agree with you. So many people have died. It's terrible, uh, the disease. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, um, but as far as the workforce goes, I think a lot of positives are coming out of this. Mhm, mhm. Because you know, at first we, we we heard of Zoom. You you rarely heard of Zoom. You heard it and you didn't hear it. Now Zoom is at the top of the line as far as video uh, providing uh, video conferencing and meetings and um, you know sharing other resources and tools. And so I feel that also that the small man is coming to the top. 
I really do. The small businesses, those that <clears throat> perhaps maybe get just a little visibility, get some. But, you know, it's just like YouTube came in and it came in and came. Now YouTube is everywhere. Now it's like a big uh, conglomerate giant, you know, all over the world. So yeah. I feel that a lot of individuals are getting uh, – um, an opportunity to be able to um, share their brand uh, with individuals is just you, you'll be surprised what um, you know what I guess what organization or what business can uh, revamp themselves overnight due to a crisis. I guess I could be able to put it that way. So with that being said, this this question is to Janice again, and so um, I think both of you all touched on the facts of um, certification, certifications, I'm sorry, and so um, talk to us a little bit about that and um, how resourceful that can be for a entrepreneur or a small business owner and uh, share with the um, audience as to um, what would be the best strong certifications for um, uh, startup entrepreneurs as well as corporate America entrepreneurs that may be in the transition of coming from the office back to the home. I would recommend Microsoft certifications. I mean, Microsoft Windows is still pretty standard um, across channels, you know, in, in the workforce. And uh, I've known people who've gotten Microsoft certification, and they said uh, it's easy and it's affordable, and it made them so much more marketable at the end of at the end of the day. And uh, so, um, from what I'm reading, a lot of people are also recommending get it becoming Microsoft certified. Okay, okay, great. And so um, with that question, um, um, Holly, you know, Linda, I'm not for sure if you're uh, familiar with Linda.com, which is a very, very uh, great, sourceful tool for a lot of, I I think I may have taken some training on that probably about five or six um, years ago. So um, let's talk about, on your on, on on your side for human resources certification is for C D E C C D E credits. Am I saying that right? C D C E D or something like that credits. And so a lot of times entrepreneurs are looking to become certified in their organizations, their small businesses. C E U credits. That's what it is. And so mm-hmm. talk to us just a little bit about um how important that is for entrepreneurs to be able to get that type of of certification and the benefits from it. Okay, so when it comes to certifications, whatever, whatever, so whatever field you're in, so whether you're project management, you have the PMP. For me, I have the SHRM CP. Um, for people who I know, some who are digital marketers or website designers, they might have Google certifications. Um, but I. I think it's important that you you follow through and complete your CEs, your continuing education credit. Um, and when you pick classes, you know I think you should pick those those classes that are relevant to what's trending currently or what maybe might be a weakness of yours to kind of strengthen, you know, all areas of your business as an entrepreneur or as a professional um, in corporate America. So, for for instance, for example, for me having a human resource um, certification, I would pick classes that I might want to learn about, like recruiting. Okay, let me talk Mm -hmm. about employee retention or management. And I always take management courses because I, you know, I always, things change. Um, Mm -hmm. There's talks about, so that's, that's kind of how I feel, I think when you have a certification, just pick things that are relevant, that interest you, or maybe you have a a weak spot you want to work on. So, yeah, that's what I would say Mm -hmm. when it comes to certification. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, Janice, in regards to target audience, how important is that in digital marketing um, as to how we find our target audience? Now, um, and I'm going to share a real weird uh, uh, scenario with uh, both you and Holly. I can recall. I think when I first got into business, 
I did. I was all over the place. Did not know how to use uh, Facebook, which is a powerful tool to be able to uh, narrow down your search and narrow down your um, the audience that you're looking for. So, how important it is it that, especially when we're on social media, um, to be able to narrow down the target audience and how to pitch for them. I, I think it's very important, and um, I've uh, published articles about the importance of finding your target market uh, many times. Um, I, uh, I use Google Analytics to find my target audience, and like you said, once you find the target audience, then you can go to social media and try to uh, attract those people. Uh, but Google Analytics is a free tool. Facebook, of course, is free as well. Um, but Google Analytics is a free tool, and uh, it's pretty easy if, you know, oh, some people find Google Analytics complex, but by, mm-hmm. simply by clicking all the, the tabs on the left side of the screen, you're going to see uh, how, for example, how the audience acquires your content, and so you're not wasting your time. You know, it is, it is you know, the ROI, you're going to get good ROI, and you go there. Uh, and yes, yeah, Facebook is one of my top three sources of traffic. And so, yes, that is the place that I would go to try to acquire um, my target audience, which will lead to uh, potential conversions, of course. And other things you'll find at Google Analytics in order to find your target audience. Um, it tells you where people are coming from. It tells you the gender. It tells you the age group. It tells you their interests. And so, you know, for me, I mean, people are interested in marketing and search engine optimization and, uh, yeah, social media and things that I write about. So you're really able to, um, to fine-tune your content as well as know where to go and who to try to uh, attract, attract when you get there. So uh, I, I always start with Google Analytics when trying to attract my, my target audience, and from there, um, I go to Facebook. My top three, personally, my top three sources of traffic are, um, according mm-hmm. to Google Analytics, are Facebook, the question and answer site Quora, and Twitter mm-hmm. are coming in third. So because Quora doesn't really let you um, self-promote too often, um, I go to Facebook and Twitter uh, and uh, and, uh, and yes, I am a constant presence on Cora because I do believe that going to Cora uh, boosts your brand. And then if people are interested, they can come over. But um, as far as uh, trying to attract your target audience, um, I, st- I always start at Google Analytics wherever I go second. Uh, go- I let Google Analytics guide me. Mhm, mhm. Great, great. So, um, Holly, this is a two-part question, and I know I'll be coming with some tough questions with you, <laughs> but this is a t- this is a two-part question. Uh, Holly, I think this is her fifth time on the show, bringing uh, us, you know, real good uh, resources for um, employers and employees um, to be able to help them to um, strategize their resumes as far as prepare them for the workforce. Uh, place and so, in regards, we're going to talk about resumes for a few minutes, and then we're going to talk about how important it is for for uh, job seekers to make sure that they are um, uploading their information to the right sources. So, take for instance, Indeed and Monster, and uh, additional other platforms uh, that are online. And I think it's another one where it's, I think it's like um, internship.com as well. They have all um, ways that you can be able to submit your resume, all of your information, your phone number, and what have you. And sometimes there are risks that um, individuals can run into scams. So talk to us a little bit about that as to how important that we research the business of where we're uploading our information to and how Indeed should be protecting our information when we're sharing all of that important, uh, you know, uh, uh, resources that we have to these platforms. So So the first part is when you're doing your research, it's really important that when you submit your application, you kind of check to see, where you're actually submitting it. So are you going to go to an online portal that the company has and you're going to enter your information and submit it? 
Um, if it's just an email, check the email. Um, I always go to the, if it's just like an email, like for some recruiter, I'll go to the company's website and try to see if I can get, um, if it's like a small company, you know, who's on mm -hmm. staff, who's the HR person. Mm -hmm. Because it's like for me, if, it, if the HR person is so-and-so, but the email is something else, I would probably contact the HR manager just to confirm, hey, is this your recruiting email? Is it not? Um, but that's kind of how I would say just to make sure you make when you submit your information. Also, when you do your resume, I highly recommend do not put your full address. Um, I always say just put mm -hmm. like a city and state. So that way they don't have mm -hmm. your address, your phone number, and your first and last name, you know, just being out there on the Internet. Um, and then Indeed, you know, they have a lot of disclaimers and um, privacy notifications um, on there. And just make sure if you are one to, especially on Indeed, put your resume public so people can find you, um, mm -hmm. I would just minimize what inf personal information you let available, which you can update in the settings on Indeed. So not anybody can search for you and have access to your personal information. So that is something mm -hmm. I always correctly so people can't just call me randomly and send me emails for bogus jobs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So a lot of times in the past, in some individuals that are um, applicants that are seeking employment, even today, they um, are not aware as to how to address um, individuals if they're trying to send them a proposal for a job or a position that perhaps may be open online. In your t your experience, you know, from um, your organization and company, mm -hmm. how would the employer, how would the applicant, I'm sorry, find out who to address? So take, for instance, they're, 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 they got their, their resume prepared, and so mm -hmm. the next thing they're trying to do, they're trying to figure out who I need to address this to, because sometimes, you know, they used to say it years ago, you can put dear sir, dear ma'am, Today, yeah. that's like an offense to individuals. They it agitates <laughs> uh, certain. It yeah. does. So, so from the information that I have uh, retrieved from individuals that have been on the show, <laughs> they that agitates the mm -hmm. HR when you don't address them. And sometimes individuals will say, "Well, you can call to the job," and then sometimes that will def that will infuse them even the more. So take us through just yeah. a little. <laughs> it will take a take us through a little step as to how applicants can be able to address themselves professionally through a resume where they can be able to obtain um, the HR or those the right specific individual who to address on the um, resume itself. Okay, so typically when you're like submitting it, I say um, to say to whom it may concern, um, that's just kind of a good blanket statement or attention hiring <laughs> team, you know, mm -hmm. um, because you don't know who's hiring. It could be just one person or it could be multiple. And also a lot of larger companies are using third parties to do the screening now. So even if you do okay. get in contact with someone, they're going to give you like a 1-800 number. And then you have to call and they'll tell you what the status is. Um, so oh. they are kind of adding layers to the contact mm -hmm. because, you know, no one – it, unfortunately, HR doesn't have time to give denial or feedback on everybody who applies to a position. So a lot of companies <laughs> right. have gone to the third-party resources to do yeah. it. Um, uh, you know, that, and that's even been my personal experience. Like, I wanted to check up on an application, and I called the 1-800 number, and they're like, yeah, so this is the status. It's still under review, and we'll pass your message to the hiring manager who may get back mm -hmm. to you. Um, mm -hmm. But that's why I was going back to LinkedIn is important because typically if that job's on Indeed, it's on LinkedIn too because they push it that job to multiple platforms. And on LinkedIn, they typically put who the hiring person is to contact. So that is a good mm -hmm. way to reach out to get in contact with the person who's hiring. And then LinkedIn is great because they have like temp like as you start typing, it will kind of auto-generate like a, a response for you hey, mm -hmm. such and such, and then, you know, it will kind of say, do you want to say this next, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, okay. LinkedIn, that's I'm saying. LinkedIn's a really good tool if you want to reach the hiring person <laughs> direct because I've applied, in, I've, in my experience, I've applied to two places and gotten 
it's been easier to get a response from LinkedIn than in than applying through like Indeed. So that's okay. That's why I push LinkedIn yeah. a lot. Yeah. Now that is awesome. That is awesome. Um, and so um, that is a very very powerful uh, tool and strategy for um, the audience because. Of, like like I stated before, years ago you could you know they would perhaps maybe let you uh, put down dear dear ma'am dear sir or what have mm-hmm. you. But today it's no 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 no, they will not allow that. So uh, thank you for that, Holly, so much uh, for the uh, listeners. So uh, with the last question to both of you, starting with Janice, um, tell us what you would like to leave um, in regards to um, digital marketing as in regards to your brand and product and services that you offer. Tell us some tips that you would like to leave with us. Oh, absolutely. Um, As far as what my brand offers personally, uh, I actually, I didn't mention this when I introduced myself, but um, I am the co-founder of a a school that will give people marketing skills so that they can get a a jump ahead of people in the post-COVID-19 Economy and the name of my academy is Mostly Blogging Academy. Mostly Blogging Academy, and uh, we offer the skills that I mentioned, the search engine marketing skills that you could offer future employers, so that you can get a jump ahead and say to them, you know, based on the course I took at the Mostly Blogging Academy, I now know how to uh, target the audience for you. I now know how to get you ahead in the, you know, Google search engine results pages. So we teach people marketable skills uh, at the Mostly Blogging Academy. Um, In addition, uh, I am a coach. uh, So if people need these uh, search engine marketing skills and they want more one-on-one intensive training, uh, I offer that as well. Um, And as I mentioned, you know, when I introduce myself, I do uh, offer e-books. Uh, and those are available at Amazon.com. Just look up Janice Wald Books and you'll find them. Mm-hmm. Great, great. Holly? Uh, yeah, so if anyone wants any more information on my career coaching or resume services, they can catch me at um, www.hrconnection.llc or they can find me on Facebook at HR Connection LLC and they'll see where I post resume examples, HR tips and videos, on help on how to live with employment strategies. Mm-hmm, absolutely. So, ladies, we thank you for being our guest today on the panel, and thank the listeners for being um, here with us on today as well. And to recoup and recover what we just uh, discussed, we were giving information and tools and resources out to the audience in regards um, to um, staffing, employees, uh, resumes. Um, digital marketing and we just we just uh, 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 was able to receive so much from two guests and we really appreciate your time and opportunity on that on today so for all upcoming events uh, of course go to our website at www.womenwhorockwithsuccess.com and until the next time you be safe and be careful thank you ladies so much thank, thank you, you so much Diane bye